know, I probably should have done this review for Christmas, but yes, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I know some people argue that it's not, but that's okay. Some people are just wrong. Now, of course, later on, there are other Die Hard games that are based off the first movie that I can review. So, you know what? Maybe I'll save those for this next Christmas or the Christmas after or whenever. So here we are with Die Hard, which was developed by Pac-In Video and published by Activision. It was released on the NES in 1991. Now, before the NES version, there actually are three other versions versions, one on the MS-DOS, Commodore 64, and TurboGrafx-16. The DOS version is a third-person style view, the Commodore 64 version is more of a side-scroller, and the TurboGrafx-16 version is very similar to the NES version. It might be a Japanese version of the game or something like that. I will talk about those possibly at a later time, maybe in a video altogether, or some sort of Let's Play or retrospective video or some goofy shit like that. Now, Die Hard is a movie that came out in 1988 that was directed by John McTiernan, written by Steve Steven D'Souza and Jeb Stewart. It features Bruce Willis as John McClane and Hans Gruber played by Alan Rickman. The movie is set on Christmas Eve, so there you go, it's a fucking Christmas movie. You can't deny it now. It's set on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is part of Christmas. It's the holiday season. There's a Christmas tree. So anyways, John McClane is a NYPD detective who arrives in Los Angeles to try and reconcile with his estranged wife, Holly. At a work Christmas party from her employer, Nakatomi Corporation, which is in the Nakatomi Plaza building, the party is disrupted by the arrival of Hans Gruber, a German terrorist, and his heavily armed team. And really, you know what? If you haven't seen this movie, go fucking see it, because it's a great film, by far one of my favorites of all time. Now, when it comes to the story behind the game, it's based off of the movie. Anyways, you will fight terrorists and rescue hostages, as well as take down Hans Gruber. As you can see, the gameplay is in a top-down view, and there's about 40 terrorists scattered throughout the building, and you must clear each floor of all these fuckers. You can use the elevator stairs, air ducts, to travel through floors 31 through 35. The game is a bit open, and of course, when you start the game, you have two difficulty modes, normal and then there's advanced. You can use guns, your fists, explosives like C4, rocket launchers, and flashbangs. If you get hit by a bullet or an enemy, you lose some life. There is a health bar. You can restore that by collecting soda cans and med kits. Now, these missions are on a time limit before one of the six locks are open. You can gain more time by destroying the main computer on the fourth floor, which will help out quite a bit. The graphics are not bad. First of all, this is an 8-bit console. There are limitations and, you know, there's going to be some issues here. One thing I do like is the little cutscenes before you start, and even during the game, like Hans asking the terrorists to check out certain floors and so on. The characters look alright. With this being an 8-bit console, there's only so much that can be done. The good thing is, you can tell them apart by the color of their clothes. There is some destructible environments here. Walls can break, glass can break, and so on, which is pretty damn cool. And one thing I do not care for, the fog-like features, or the the darkened spots of the level. Not all parts of the level is visible, and that is probably done because it would have been too much for this game. But it's annoying as hell, and you know, I did notice a little glitching and flickering in some spots. I'm sure it's worse on an actual NES console, and I'm playing this obviously via emulator, and it's just really annoying after a while. But for the most part, I think the game looks great. When it comes to the music, well, it's kind of the same piece of music playing over and over again until you fight some enemies, and once they're dead or off the screen, it goes back to the same music. But that being said, though, it's not horrible. Just after a while, you can really tune it out of your head. The sound effects from movement, gunfire, and everything are good. Really not a ton to complain about here. Now, I do want to talk about the game's difficulty and a few things here and there. Die Hard is a tough game, but I don't think it was done purposely. The hit detection can be really shitty. Also, if you get hit with a bullet, it stuns you a bit. Now, this can really fuck you over, especially if there's multiple enemies on screen. If an enemy keeps shooting at you, you can't do anything for a few seconds. Hitting them when shooting isn't so bad. It's just the hand-to-hand -hand combat that is frustrating as hell. After a little while, I do okay. You are going to put a lot of time into this game to try and beat it. Also, I think the controls might have a little bit of a say in this game because they're not the best, especially when shooting. The shooting responds well when you're actually shooting. It's the aiming. Your enemies have no problem with spreading bullets all over the place, but shooting diagonally, that can be annoying. And you have to chase after them to even shoot them, which I get because they're running away from you. Now, when it comes to actual responding of moving around, that is a too bad. You are going to slow down a bit because your feet get cut up from the glass, kind of like in the movie. Die Hard on the NES is not a horrible game. Some people 
people claim it is, and I get where they're coming from. But I think the game is very much playable. Tough at times and sometimes unforgiving, but I do like the aspect of this game. I like the top-down view. The graphics look great. Other than some flickering here and there, the music is not bad. Could be better, but once again, not horrible. The difficulty will kick your ass. It definitely kicked mine. And the controls have some issues, but I have played worse games. Mostly this has to do with the shooting. And I also think that the hit detection is off, especially when you get shot. It also seems to help the enemies more. A little balancing would have been nice, but you know what? This game isn't garbage. If you like the Die Hard movie and want to try this game out, well, your best bet is to either emulate or find a copy out there for the NES. Now, the game is 72% rare, so it might be a little tough to find, but there are some on eBay. And holy fucking shit, the prices are expensive. $155.58, $149.99, $89.99, $279.99 for a complete inbox. $295 for a complete inbox. A factory sealed for $699 fucking dollars. You can buy a fucking current gen console or a half-ass decent computer for $699. These prices shouldn't be like this. Not worth its fucking price. At this point, you just have to emulate that motherfucker. Don't buy into the bullshit of, to be a real gamer, you need to have this on your shelf. No, fuck you. Eat my ass. I know somebody's gonna get pissed at that. <laughs> but hey, it's the truth. Now, when it comes to other Die Hard games, there is Die Hard 2, Die Harder on the Commodore 64, Amiga, and MS-DOS, Die Hard Trilogy on the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and PC, Die Hard Arcade, which is an arcade game, and also on the Sega Saturn, Die Hard Trilogy 2, Viva Las Vegas on the PlayStation and PC, Die Hard Nakatomi Plaza on the PC, Die Hard Vendetta on the GameCube, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. In 2013, there was Die Hard that was a Android, iPhone and iPad game. And then there's A Good Day to Die Hard on the Android and J2ME. At a later time, I want to review some of these, especially the mid to late 90s one. And I actually own a copy of Die Hard Nakatomi Plaza. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review of Die Hard on the NES. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker.